evening everyone slash morning it's um it's quite early it's not too bad it's like uh half eight there's a there's a train behind me oh a loco and then there's the the sleeper train behind me there i'm in uh top tudor uh station in um <laughs> in belgrade or you can't really call it in belgrade it's miles out of belgrade uh and as i might film although might not this is gonna be chaos um uh, the, the tram has been basically just completely destroyed, so you have to get a bus up here if you're going to get up here by public transport at all. Uh, also, look, look at the state of the track. But anyway, it's fine because we're doing the, uh, we're doing Belgrade... <laughs> we're doing Belgrade Bar uh, today um, because I insisted, because it's stunning, except that it's not stunning, it's raining a lot. Uh, so hopefully we'll have some views and we'll be stuck in the cloud the whole time. If we're stuck in the cloud the whole time, rubbish. It won't make a very good episode either. Um, but yeah, so the plan is to do Belgrade Bar. Uh, there's the, the, I'm putting up some B-roll now of the ticket office. Which is kind of, I think the station is, is kind of that way. So let's, let's, go, let's go and have a look, shall we? The station's this way. Uh, uh, yeah, there it is. This used to be like the uh, the royal waiting hall, and then, and then it got like the, the rest of the station existed, and, and then got blown up. It got blown up several times. It got blown up, and then they built this thing. And then it got blown up, and then they just thought, ah, stuff it. We'll just use the royal waiting room. Um, there's a nice big this size. This thing here behind me. Yeah, right. big old loco. This is uh, so. This is top Tudor. It's quite smart. Isn't it? Yeah. It's not bad, is it? Um, but uh, anyway, see, the tracks are kind of not, not quite so bad this direction either. Behind me, I think that's the sleeper train. There are two trains a day. Uh, one a daytime train and the other a nighttime train. So I think that's probably the nighttime train that's done the day trip one way and then it's going to do the day trip the other way. The journey's 11 hours. So leaves here at 9 a.m., arrives in bar at uh, 8 p.m. So that's, uh, that's going to be the trip and hopefully there are a few things to see. It's electrified all the way. So this is... Yeah, anyway, right, enough of that. With uh, Top Tudor Station behind me, uh, I'm gonna say, uh, <laughs> uh, maybe show you some more things in a minute, but uh, first of all, welcome to tonight's Rail Matter. As the Intercity 225 fades away, don't mind me, I'm just walking and pretending that I'm getting on the train for the first time. So uh, we're at the steps. Also, don't, don't get myself chopped in half by the door. And uh, there's the toilet. Yeah, it's not bad, it's nice to size. There's some, some glowing buttons. And uh, into quite a nice illuminated uh, coach. It's very nice, it's quite peaceful in here. But uh, yeah, let's do a spin. It's not too bad at all, it's quite smart. Uh, let's see. Uh, it's quite comfy, nice seats, a nice uh, seat inclination there. Seats comfy, but uh, are they 11 hours comfy? Uh, I'll tell you in 11 hours. And um, hopefully, as I said, the cloud will not block all the views. Uh, and if, if it does, then I have to do lots of filler material with, with, with pictures to show you what it's supposed to look like. Uh, but um, in the meantime, we'll see. I've no idea how this is going to stitch together, but. Uh, it's a Belgrade bar train journey episode. We'll see what it ends up looking like. So, uh, in, in amongst uh, in, in amongst the uh, the actual travelling shenanigans, I'm also going to be um, telling tell, telling a bit of a story, the wider story, the context of the Belgrade Bar Railway, um, and kind of in, in like four chapters broadly. Uh, chapter one will be uh, where the heck is it? Where is the Belgrade Bar Railway? Chapter two. What was Socialist Yugoslavia? And um, a bit of context as to the formation of Socialist Yugoslavia, because it was Socialist Yugoslavia who built this railway. 
um, and generally about railways in the former Yugoslavia. Uh, chapter three, uh, building the Belgrade Bar Railway. We'll talk about um, how it was built, uh, kind of the, 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 the time it took to build this this enormous feat, uh, and a bit about the actual infrastructure on the route in terms of you know the bridges, tunnels, you know, just a spectacular bit of civil engineering. And then uh, chapter four, uh, briefly talk about the Belgrade Bar Railway in operation, what the services currently look like and how it's used and, and how it might potentially be used in the future. Uh, so so all in all, uh, we'll, we'll cover uh, these four chapters spread amongst these three three episodes um as they will be um uh, how, how it kind of comes out in the edit we'll, we'll soon find out right first impressions are um it's not bad actually it's quite nice it looks like um pretty decent intercity stock uh nice uh nice seat inclination there it's very comfortable plenty of space for luggage above my head we've got both of our big bags up there and uh, it's quite cosy as well. I'm looking forward to it. Whether uh, Dina co is, is looking forward to 11 hours of train journey is quite another matter, but uh, we'll see. So uh, yeah, quick look inside the train. It's pretty modern, nice intercity train, really. Uh, relatively speaking, you know, comfy seats. Uh, yeah, let's see, fairly comfy seat. Uh, an instruction as to how to get out the train there on the floor. Uh, there's this little table that's big enough for um, for a, a kind of a half baked bit of borek. Um, just about. Uh, most importantly, there was a phone charging capability given the length of the journey and how much I was using my phone. So I was very grateful for the fact that I could charge my phone. Yeah, all, all the mod cons, including multiple lights and uh, technologies and flashing doodads. Um, it had automatic doors, or, or at least this coach did. Um, and uh, all the sort of standard safety features you'd expect, like the useless hammer, uh, instructions to be ignored about smoking, more on that next episode. Um, uh, yeah, uh, all good stuff. Uh, also, the, the occasional COVID stuff like this instruction saying, uh, please, for everyone to please sit by the window. Um, useful. Thought I'd, uh, having, having pretended to get on the train for the first time, I thought I'd uh, walk along the way because there's plenty of time and I definitely would recommend arriving in good time to make sure that everyone's happy with your papers and everything and tickets. I'll do a video of the tickets because, you know, I've never done one of these sorts of things before. I'm just going to film everything in sight and jumble it together. But, um, before I do that, I thought I'd walk the length of the train. So, uh, this is the locomotive we were looking at earlier. Nice, big, quite new. Uh, actually, is it a... I don't, know what, I don't exactly know what it is, but it looks quite, it looks quite smart. There's the whole train. But, oh, it's just rained on me. Don't worry about that. Let's uh, spin around and walk the length of the train. Yeah, so there's, there's the big loco. Looking smart. Toot toot. There. I'll, sub I'll subtitle in all of the uh, sober croat. There, uh, there's the uh... see it's a train. It's nice, isn't it? Right, it's walking the length of the train. It's just it's what is it? One, two, three. It's only four coaches long. It's all making it's making very unnerving sounds, like we need to be getting on it and moving. But uh, yeah, it's nice. It's got a bit of, a bit of graffiti on it. But inside's quite smart. It's got heating. Uh, yeah, it's like making all sorts of unnerving sounds like we're going to have to fly. Yeah, it's like one of these two people behind us. Uh, there we are. So, I think they're all just kind of open-seated coaches. I'm going to not walk the whole way because the platform kind of ends that way. You can see this, this is the end of the platform and there's a bit of rain landing on me again. Yeah. Four coach trains, not much to say really, other than sort of uh, some graffiti that they've cleared with the signage. I'm going to hop on the train I think because uh, it's moving, so uh, yeah, let's see what else we can see. Actually, still a very good idea. I 
motor rail, I have mixed feelings. There'll be an episode about whether motor rail is a good idea in the UK at some point, I'm sure. But uh, it's interesting to, to actually see those vehicles still in, in operation. We're off, we're moving. <laughs> we're moving. <laughs> oh. uh, indeed we are. Look, we're racing uh, yet another um, uh, 461. Uh, series local. They're like, quite smart actually given their age. Anyway, I digress. Um, we're, we're kind of working our way uh, down from Top Tudor uh, southwards towards uh, the first stop which is Arakovica which is kind of a, another suburb uh, within Belgrade. Oh, look at some uh, some nice tracks looking well this is a bit of a story uh, looking like they're out of focus because of the rain on the window. Anyway, this bit's fun because uh, apart from the fact there's some, some kind of parked up more modern stock in the way uh, here. This is the the sort of the length, these lengthy sidings, kind of between Top Tudor and and Rakovica. Um and uh, these. There's, and there's a building here as well, which has Tito's blue train in it, which I'm sure you can Google more about. But there's uh, there's bits of it stuff. So all this passenger stock vandalised and sort of stuck. Beovoz is the the name of the the Belgrade sort of suburban uh, train service that runs kind of through the tunnels under. Uh, Vukspomenik uh, and out to Panchevo from, from Zemun. Um, more on Belgrade in the future. What's interesting though is um, this is the building that's got, theory, in theory, was built to store Tito's train safely, but you can see some tips and blue train, blue train stuff in the background, some of these blue okay. train coaches. Um, that I want to film. Oh no, don't be hidden behind Oh yeah, me. there's me getting annoyed by what look suspiciously like some Donnerbusch and um, uh, here, some German all steel Tito's wagon the transport fee for two fans anyway look there's some of the, the, the locos from the blue train those um, those there they are those, those fab express locos anyway right here we are pulling into Rakovica um, while I'm here and, and saying things uh, in, in post um, worth noting this episode's going to have lots of loud bits where I film stuff in a vestibule I can only apologise um, be ready to turn your volumes down in the meantime uh, some geography <laughs> So, uh, chapter one. Uh, where, where is the Belgrade Bar Railway? Um, well, in order to work out where it is, uh, we need to look at the world. Here is the world. Uh, I, I can't remember what projection this is. It's the, the UK is much smaller than this compared to the rest of the world, though, by the way, everyone. It's, it's not a great projection. Uh, Africa is a lot bigger. Uh, anyway, but uh, whatever. It's uh, it's an SVG that I could find that, that kind of works. Uh, if anyone can find a better one, uh, chuck me it. Anyhow, uh, Serbia. We start in Serbia, over here in southeastern Europe. Um, and uh, the Belgrade Bar Railway starts in Serbia, uh, or ends in Serbia, depending on which direction you're going. Uh, and it uh, starts slash ends in Montenegro, uh, in English Montenegro, uh, and in uh, Serbo Croat it's uh, Tunagora, um, or Montenegrin. Montenegro isn't really a language, although I suppose Montenegrins would shout at me if I said that. But uh, in Serbo Croat, Tunagora um, is the, the name of the country, uh, which means um, the, the Black Mountains, funnily enough, because that's also what Montenegro mountains that are black I mean anyway um uh serbia montenegro uh and also the line runs through bosnia herzegovina uh bosnia uh bosnia herzegovina um there are. anyway uh those three and those three countries are all part of the uh there they are uh they are part of the former yugoslavia there it is former yugoslavia um and those countries yes those countries um part of the former Yugoslavia, also part of the wider area that is often called the Balkans. But the Balkans covers this kind of much wider sort of area that's sort of around the Balkan mountains. They're actually to the north of Serbia, uh, kind of like Bulgaria area, really. But it's basically this this sort of southeastern lump of Europe that's kind of with bounded by Turkey and the Black Sea on one side uh, and on the other side by the Adriatic, by um uh, by the kind of the, 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 the you know with Italy and, and and then and then sort of Austria and 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 Czechia and so on uh, kind of to the north so kind of bounded by the Alps to the north uh, and the Mediterranean Sea to the south uh, the Black Sea and Turkey to the to the east and that's kind of the Balkans and it's a very very rich you know kind of culturally and and um, ethnically diverse area. And as a result, it gets spicy um, from time to time. Uh, more on that in a bit. But our railway is here. Let's zoom in on uh, on this little bit here. So we're going to zoom in. This is the, the, the area as it is. This is most of uh, the former Yugoslavia in this screen. Um, and our railway starts in Belgrade, in Serbia, Beograd, and Srpskom. 
um, and uh, runs down to bar. Uh, there we are. Oh, I've actually moved the text there. Anyway, never mind. Uh, down to bar on the coast. Um, bar is not the capital of Montenegro, by the way. It's just the coast. It's this main main sort of uh, port. Uh, Podgorica is the capital of Montenegro. But the railway runs through Podgorica on the way down through uh, here as the railway runs down through from Belgrade to bar. Um, and actually, as I say, a little bit of it runs into, in fact, exactly nine kilometres worth runs uh, through Bosnia and Herzegovina. And in this episode, in, in, in these three episodes, the uh, the first episode will be running from Belgrade through to Užica. Uh, the second episode will run from Užica down to Kolosin. And then the third episode will run from Kolosin uh, down to Bar. So three episodes. The first will cover most of Serbia. The second will cross the Serbian border into Montenegro, uh, climbing up into the mountains, the peak of the rail, the peak of the whole railway up at Kolosin. And the third episode will run down the hill into Bar. Um, roughly that's the split and uh, and we'll see how that uh, works in terms of adding extra bits in an episode length but that, that's about going to be the split and I think roughly that kind of covers the, thir- the three th- that's, that's it's about a third of the journey split in terms of actual journey time in terms of actual f- material filmed time we'll see anyway that's the trip so uh, yeah, uh, some nice uh, freight here in uh, in, in uh, as we're kind of pulling out of Rakovica um, yeah kind of coming sa- south facing out of out of Belgrade it's worth saying, and I, I'm going to, while this lengthy container train passes, uh, or, or kind of we, we pass through it, it's pretty, whenever I need to spend any time in Belgrade, and, and, and I, I was going to say more about Belgrade, because it's, it's a city I absolutely adore, but I'm going to dedicate an entire episode to it. One of the things uh, that I recommend doing is hiring bikes down at uh, down at uh, Ada, um, and cycling around Ada for a loop, because it's fun to do so, and then cycling up along the rivers, crossing um, uh, Brankov Most, uh, or, or the... Uh, the old um, tram bridge uh, and cycling around to Zemun because that's very nice as well and getting a, a fish dinner. Anyway, I digress. The one thing you'll notice a lot is the amount of rail freight. Um, I, I, I was cycling around Belgrade before they ripped up the tracks into the into the uh, in and around the the original station, and there was lots of rail freight would trundle around the back of Kalamegdan. Um, but Belgrade is you know Serbia's landlocked, and, and as we'll talk about later, oh, there's a little suburban train, very nice. Um, uh, it. You know, this line was the connection, is built as the main connection to the sea. So it's a really key freight artery. And we'll see that. And there's, oh, there's some fantastic uh, kind of double slip crossings. And in fact, it's various tracks. I think these are the tracks that coming into or coming out of uh, the loop that goes around to, um, it goes around to uh, Makish. There's this big uh, kind of, in fact, an enormous uh, marshalling yard uh, around at Makish, uh, which is kind of next to the, next to the, sa- or kind of, close to the the uh, actually i think it might be an old route of the sava uh, uh, but anyway it's 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 kind of on the flat plains towards the sava on the other side of the hill next to rubchina um right and here we go in fact that might be the loop coming around and you can see we're kind of coming out there's a oh there's a oh hello it's a nice um modern looking was that a vectron or a taurus anyway it's a nice looking electric loco and more freight and it's kind of making the point i'm going to talk about this in the last chapter about op- operation about how much freight is critical on this route but there's just an enormous amount of freight going on um uh, and uh, this, this, this kind of merge, and you, you notice this as you go down the line. There are several areas. You know, uh, Vriotsi is a key example where there's the huge lignite mines and you know, the, the power power stations that power most of Serbia. Um, just a, 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 and they pass across the Belgrade Bar line. There's just a, an enormous reliance on rail freight um, on a country that doesn't have much in the way of passenger railways. It, it certainly relies heavily on on this corridor for rail freight. So um, we've, we've set off, we're climbing, you can see out the window there, and um, kind of weaved our way through the, not really the suburbs, but the kind of the urban sprawl of Belgrade. And, uh, and now, well, we can kind of look at it. Well, unfortunately, it's rainy and it's a bit steamy, so filming out the window is not great, but you, you get an idea of the, the sort of terrain outside. It's this uh, mixed sort of woodland, very pleasant actually. Uh, I think I don't. I think the railway leads through the area of part of Serbia called Shuma, Shumadia. Shuma is like woodland. Um, it's quite comfy as well. We're, we're not going fast. We're probably going about 40 miles an hour or something. But it's uh, maybe a little bit faster. It's quite quite comfortable ride. Uh, yeah. Also, the, the thing that I did notice is that there's loads of trains actually using the, the railways in uh, kind of south of Belgrade. Lots of freight trains. I think have filled the containers. And, other freight, also the new, I think there's a, there was a brand new Vectron that I maybe caught a snap of and film. I don't know, I might shut that dreadful shot up anyway. But uh, yeah, so uh, quite busy. Lots of two, we saw two, two pretty long container trains. Um, we've already been through several of the 
however many hundred, two hundred tunnels there are on the route, I can definitely tell you how many tunnels there are. I can even double it in because I'm wearing a mask. Um, yeah, uh, this is it's a spectacular bit of engineering. There's another one of the tunnels. Uh, it's a spectacular bit of engineering, this railway. Um, and I'm probably going to do voiceover and explaining the, the route and the history uh, just now because it's, it, it's really interesting. Some of that context is quite interesting. So, um, yeah, but anyway, I, I thought I'd share with you. Uh, Share with you some of that journey. Also, it's, a, it's a, just an indicator of which uh, of the manufacture of the train, uh, of the, the coach. It's all quite comfy. Uh, it's, it's, it's good. It's good. Been in this tunnel for ages now. <laughs> it's a really long tunnel. I think there are two like six kilometer or more tunnels on this route. Of, of, the, of the hundreds of tunnels that there are, there are two big ones. This, is, this isn't a short one, I don't know if it's the biggest, but this is not a short tunnel. I'm going to do a map anyway, I'm also going to do a snazzy rail map style map, so that'll explain where we are and what I'm filming and blah blah blah. Good grief, sorry about the sound quality on that one. Yes, um... Belgrade to Užice is part one, as we've said, uh, and I have created a nice little map. You can see the line coming down through the, the section uh, between uh, Resniki and Vriotsi, built in 1958, then the, the much later sections, um, uh, Vriotsi to Valjevo and uh, Valjevo to uh, Užice uh, there. Um, we'll kind of come through those later, but the, the, the kind of the, the first section here that we're doing, Belgrade to uh, Belgrade, so Belgrade is, the, is, is serving for Belgrade. White City is kind of the, the plains approaching Shumadia, climbing out of Belgrade, but um, on the relatively flat uh, land, uh, I mean, I say relatively flat, it's, it's, it's pretty hilly actually, but south of Belgrade is the big wooded area, um, which I think I describe, um, called Shumadia, and that's where we're heading. And indeed, um, we, yeah, you can see my little stupid face there. Uh, you can see we've just, uh, in fact, I'm in the middle of a tunnel. I think it's called Tunnel 4. I couldn't find what the actual name of the tunnel is. Tunnel 4. It is one of the longer tunnels, it's not the longest on the route. Um, but yeah, here we can see we are um, uh, not far out of Belgrade at this point. Anyway, um, there's a few kind of more local stations that we pass through. Actually, we don't stop at every station on this on this line. Uh, this is sort of this is a bit what of what um, Belgrade sort of outer suburbs look like. There's sort of very sparse, random houses dotted around with with often with a little bit of agri around them. Uh, it's pretty standard of Shumadia. There's some excellent wineries, by the way, in, in, in and around this region. So I'd recommend uh, visiting the ability for you to visit them. But also industry. I think I can't remember. I don't know whether this is Virozzi or Virozzi or further north still. But this is just um, certainly this bit is, is is sort of pretty heavy industry going on as we go further south. I think actually the next bit, yes, this I think is Virozzi. So where you've got this incredible. There's a map online that you can look up. There's just this incredible number of um, rail. You know tens and tens of kilometres of railway line serving these you know, this enormous open cast lignite mine feeding these power stations um, and here we are in uh, Lazarevats um, in fact pulling out of Lazarevats so progress already here is a nice uh, another nice okay, it's a very nice well looked after silver and blue Beauvoir's, um suburban train it's lovely I think it's not too long, but it's it's quite you know it's it's good. It's, it's quite smart. It's got a bit of a, a a bit of a retro vibe. Oh, a little bit of vandalism. Never mind. Here we are in, uh, in, in kind of pulling out of Lykovac. It's a smaller town to the to kind of to the west of uh, Lazarevac, but sort of still a fairly sizable town. There's kind of a ribbon of towns along here that, that sort of snake along before you before you you get into Valuable. Um, actually, along here, this whole stretch is a uh, is the construction of uh, kind of coming out of uh, kind of to the to the west of Lykovac is a, a new highway being built, which I, I think I. Yeah, well, before I yammer about that, good grief, it'd be good if I held the camera straight, wouldn't it? Anyway, embarrassing. Before I talk about that highway, yeah, this is sort of standard sort of 
Serbian town vibes. This is what towns often look like in, in Serbia. You get this kind of these, these kind of low level buildings and the high rises that were kind of or the medium density sort of buildings built up. Yeah, they're quite pleasant to be honest. Lots of lots of green space and uh, yeah, it's nice. Big gardens. So there's the, uh, there's the existing highway, um, uh, as of, as the case, <laughs> the, the, there's been a fixation on building, in fact you see some of the highway construction work going on here, there's, there is a fixation in, in, in Serbia, partly through EU funding, oh there's a little railway station, partly through EU funding of, of expanding their highway system rather than expanding the railway system. Very frustrating. Yeah, I see more highway construction. Uh, this is a theme across the Balkans to be honest, enormous amounts of money, billions of pounds being spent, or billions of euros rather being spent on new roads and um, very little by comparison being spent on rail and the situation should be the reverse. I do find it very frustrating. Anyway, this uh, yeah, there's some more scenes that are pretty typical of this uh, this part of the country. You know, uh, as I was saying earlier, open, 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 kind of open flat plains now. We're kind of south of Shumadia here. Open flat plains. Oh, toot toot. Lots of how kind of spread, sparsely spread houses. Lots of industry spread around. Um, and as you can see, the weather is just gorgeous, absolutely gorgeous at the moment. <laughs> so after all that fun, we've moved south from uh, Belgrade uh, through Lazarevac, uh into uh, pretty much into Valley Oval, um, which is a pretty sizable town. It's uh, it's quite pleasant, uh, worth a, worth a visit. Uh, what's interesting about this though is we're kind of reaching the end of the flat plains. Okay, Shumadi is a bit of a hill. We're reaching the end of the flat plains, uh, as you can see from the, the this, this cross section with once again my face appearing on it. Um, we're starting to reach the, the bottom of the first real major ascent up to around 500 meters um, to get uh, well, underneath uh, Donovacki Kik, which is one of the, the big hills um, in, in sort of central Serbia. So onwards. Indeed, there's Valley of Station. Um, and you can see some pretty sizable. Oh, that's, that's a nice hat. Uh, you can see a pretty, pretty sizable development here in Valley of Lots of uh, socialist era housing uh, at scale. Um, to deal with the you know, population growth, uh, all the houses have got smashed to bits. Um, medium density housing is good. I mean, these might not be the prettiest, but they're probably pretty decent houses. In fact, quite a lot of these were really quite nice. Quite, there's, there's, a, there's a housing project that I've been to in, in New Belgrade and in, in, in New Zagreb, actually. They're really quite nice inside. They're quite good. Anyway, um, is that an old train that we just saw there? Uh, Oh, another one as well. Oh, that's exciting. There are some train, uh, more, more, a maintenance train as well. Uh, a knackered old coach. Uh, oh, there's all sorts going on. Uh, and probably some good stuff is about to appear. Yeah, there we go. Pretty standard. I did say this was going to be slow. Oh, yeah. Uh, uh, some horrendous architecture there. Good grief. Awful. That's more modern stuff. Just dreadful. Um, I did say this was going to be a slow episode. I'm, I'm trying to give a feel for the... Like, a, a textural feel for the journey. It's not going to be like a six... This isn't a Jeff Marshall cropped six-minute video. I promise you that. But um, to be fair, you can... It, th those of you watching this live can can have nice chats with each other uh, and talk about... Oh, there's some nice... Uh, nice uh, Lashka... Buses down there at the bottom. That's nice. That's nice. Oh, and an Orthodox church in the background there as well. Um, oh, yeah, an interesting thing up here. So we're, we're going over, actually, you can't see it in this shop, but the, the, there are some additional extended piers for an additional span next to us on this bridge. And I, it got my curiosity up, and I was getting ready to film in time to pick up this, uh, this, this disused span of a proposed extension of the railway facing more westwards because the railway kind of turned the Belgrade Bar Railway turns a bit south from this point but this kind of continued to face westwards and it absolutely fascinating in, into a tunnel portal which I think was half built as well uh, this is just sits disused I'm very curious does anyone out there know what this would have been uh, was it an alternative routing of Belgrade Bar or was it a, a, a kind of an expansion connecting across from Valjevo to um, maybe even across to Sarajevo but perhaps Zvornik or, or beyond So we've, um, we've just come out of uh, Valjevo, uh, which is like quite a big town, kind of a third of the way down Serbia. So we've, we've, we've got a pretty decent lick actually for most of that journey, which I'm guessing is because uh, quite a few local and regional trains use it. Uh, just going to another tunnel. 
and but we've slowed right down, which I'm guessing, because if we're going to keep that pace up, there's no chance this is an 11 hour journey. This is an 11 hour journey, which means that I'm expecting it to get slower and slower as we you know, reach, as we start climbing up into the mountains of uh, Tsumagora of Montenegro, um, actually southern Serbia to start with. And um, yeah, we have indeed slowed down. It's got a bit more weavy, there's uh, a bit more geography outside the window. Yeah, it's, uh, it's still quite nice. It's such a shame about the way that all my filming is very grey, they're drips, so I'm really sorry. Well, I'll try and try and touch it up as best I can, but then uh, what can you do, eh? It's a tunnel again. It's, it's, it's me in the mirror, infinitely. Yes, yeah, very good me two years ago. Um, you're getting a little tease of something rather wonderful that's to come, but uh, yeah. In the meantime, yeah, the, the, the passing loops. A chance for me to talk about passing loops. I think uh, the obviously this is a single track railway, but it has quite a lot of passing loops. Passing loops, I think, enable train lengths of only 500 meters. So there's the if, if you're trying to work out how long your train can be, that's it. Uh, yeah, it's funny how many holes there are that you could film out of uh, out of the train. Anyway, this this footage, these little sna snapshots through the the grim rain and mist, uh, giving an idea of how spectacular this section of railway is. And essentially, the railway climbs up through uh, through this gorge, this wooded gorge, sort of kind of uh, southern European temperate rainforest type uh, situation. I, I would say um, uh, above the river Gradac. The Gradac is is you can see the road on the other side. The Gradac is down um, in the in the valley bottom. The railway climbing alongside as we kind of gain more and more height and the railway gets more and more spectacular. We've got out tunnel after tunnel. The alignment really is quite something here. I, I, I honestly recommend going out and looking at it on Google Maps. You can just see the elevation of the railway climb as we get closer and closer to the, to the tops of the, of the hills. It's waterfall. Well, the good thing about the rain was that there were quite a few waterfalls along the route as well, which is quite nice. Um, uh, yes, just on, honestly stunning. Again, you can see there that the, the river is far below the height is, you know, and there's this wonderful, colourful mix of, of of woodland actually, a really spectacular habitat. So we're skipping in and out of tunnels. Yeah, we're getting a slightly clearer view now. You can see we've gained quite a bit of height by the by the kind of the nature of the terrain outside. Um, brief snapshots here and hither and thither uh, as you kind of go in and out of valleys and hillsides and here we are kind of looking at much closer to the tops of the peaks uh, actually and um, it's at this point where uh, you, you get a sense of the, the, you know, this is still the tame end of the railway and suddenly you get a sense of how spectacular an engineering feat this was the scale of it is, is remarkable and actually one thing that was nice about this weather is you got this lovely mistiness of the mist hanging in the trees um, yeah, really, really, you've got something. I don't know this is going long and, and it's not hugely interesting content, but hopefully it's just giving you a feel for the for the nature of the railway. I want to capture this for posterity. So it's, uh, it's 11 o'clock. Yeah, 11 o'clock. And uh, just walking out, having a little walk through the train to experience it. This is a, what looks like a slightly older coach. Uh, in fact, I can probably tell by the door. Coming here. Uh, Let's go with quite a bit older. <laughs> it's a bit more shocky. But um, we just went through uh, this a stunning area. Uh, like the, it's like a, a canyon. Uh, I'll show you some footage. Really difficult to capture in the camera, not least because of the steamy windows and the, the drips. But um, it's called Gradats, the river Gradats. Uh, and then there's this kind of spectacular canyon. Absolutely beautiful. Um, lots of bridges. I mean, you see, I put some in place some footage of like the, the, the number of tunnels that we've been passing through. Quite something, but we've, we've passed up over the over that now, and uh, actually you can't see much behind me. But uh, basically, we're back out into some sort of kind of flatter pasture area again. Yeah, it's a bit more a bit more like the uh, the area we were in before, south of Belgrade. So that was really spectacular. So this bit, I think we might speed up again, but uh, yeah, we're still going quite slow at the moment. But uh, yeah, it's, it's not bad. It's a comfortable train. It's actually this end of the train is quite empty. We're in a coach that's quite full. But this train, this coach is. Uh, 
we'll uh, we'll leave me from two years ago dithering about in the train for a moment while I uh, just uh, remind us where we got to. So uh, actually, at this very point, we're about to enter a tunnel, quite a substantial tunnel at the at the head of the of the, of this, this valley near uh, Bukovi, which is a fascinating bit of railway engineering where the the, the railway cuts into a, a tear shaped tunnel um, before then climbing further. Uh, it, it's it's yeah it, it's 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 really quite quite spectacular bit of bit of engineering difficult to describe but you can see there's a there's a kind of a, a, a little indent south of Valievo uh, so sorry I was a Valievo now uh, uh, I am just south of that little kink so we've just gone round that kink and you can see the kink just above where my little head is this is just at the peak so this is at the point where having just gone over this valley head we start we actually start dropping again uh, towards uh, Pojega. Let's walk out through the train and have a look. Nice, nice uh, automatic doors that, that work eventually. Uh, there's the vestibule, well, uh, you can see close behind me. The vestibule, you can see there's some, uh, some hand gel. Uh, this, the interlocking's not working, so this door, I could open this door right now if I wanted to. I would recommend doing that. Uh, what else we've got? To the plate up here, 1998. That's, uh, it's impressive they were at the time to build railway coaches in the late 90s, given what was going on. Um, yeah, it's fairly nice. But you can't say anything is bleached out. Uh, let's do this, let's do this. So if I press this button here, that bit door opens. And then I've stood. I just gained this bit fairly rapidly. That's a chink of light above me coming in from uh, through the gangway. Uh, and I think I'm back in my coach. There. It's, it's not, uh, you know, it's not not completely modern, but uh, I think it's perfectly perfectly comfortable and reasonable. Let's see, I'll, let's see if I'm still saying that in eight hours. What time is it? That's uh, nine hours. Anyway, yes, we found our way. Um into the the kind of the upper reaches of the western Morava, one of the big rivers of uh, of Serbia. Uh, you can see sort of this kind of again sort of plains, verdant, lots of uh, lots of agriculture. Uh, yeah, you know, very pleasant. There's some, they're surrounded by mountains uh, in all directions, though, because we are very much in the in the thick of the mountains of uh, former Yugoslavia. And here we are. Uh, I definitely just filmed us pulling into um, into uh, Kosjedic um, and, and, and pulling out. Because it, it's kind of nice, but it's you know, just just some some light freight, uh, you know, a fair few tracks. Um, here we are pulling into Kosjerich, another fantastic hat. A cheery, cheery member of the railway staff here. They're quite nicely turned out, the staff and the railway. There's, here, this guy's running for a train. They're quite popular, quite well used. Just anyone with their stopwatch can count the dwell time. Station station master just did. I don't think much of the platform construction in fairness here. It's uh yes yeah, a rather uh, yeah, it's a rather fetching station though. Look at that. Look at the station building. It's lovely. The tension's building. When are we gonna go? When are we gonna leave? Here he is. We're off. Almost. 56.67 seconds for a um, 10, 11, 12, 13 hour, spoiler alert, uh, train journey, long distance service. That is some seriously impressive uh, train dispatch work from the, uh, from the station master there. Beautiful stuff. This is a Stadler flirt looking very smart. Um, it's, it's, it's nice. I've ridden one of these. Nova no, Sad when that line was open. Actually, it's reopened, hasn't it? Anyway, I digress. Um, there we are. And uh, what else is going on? Ah, yes. Well, it, we are in the foothills, and you see the misty mountains rising above us. But there's still lots of this industry, and it's just for anyone who's not travelled around the Balkans, this is this is the vibe. And it's a very Central European vibe, actually. It's quite similar, isn't it? You know, you've got you've got mountainy stuff. You've got sort of medium industry and and, and retail and, and all sorts of bits and pieces, sort of spread out. Thinly, you got their houses spread around. It's all quite difficult to to achieve really high public transport provision. Um, nevertheless, 
definitely it's interesting to see how much the railway was used given that this is just like one train i mean there are lots of other trains on this line up to this point lots of local trains run um but uh yeah people are still using this this train as a service train not just going for the long distances but but using it to hop between towns yeah uh, more to be done you know expand public transport Anyway, it's still very scenic, you know, very beautiful, and all electrified. All these people who say, oh, you know, you can't really, yeah, it's not, just can't justify electrification in, in rural areas. Yeah, you can't, just do it. It's part of how a modern railway looks. Just just do it. Um, yeah, baffling. Anyway, it's getting more wooded, as you can see, as we're climbing up the hill. Oh, yeah, another um, passing loop here. Uh, freshly ballasted as well, a bit nice. I mean, it's still timber sleepers, but it's, you know, fresh ballast. Quite a lot, and we'll talk about this later, I think, probably next episode, uh, or the episode after, actually. Um, th there's a lot of work being done uh, on the railway, a lot of civil engineering work to upgrade Im and improve it. Um, oh, some SNC as well, just to cheer everyone up. Oh, crikey, and it's slips and, and, and all manner of exciting things. Uh, and as we're coming into our next next location uh, because we're approaching Prochega um, see more goods goods wagons quite a lot of modern goods wagons here of all sorts of different types uh, not least the the niche um, oil wagons uh, here for the um, petrochem stuff uh, also some, there's definitely some passenger wagons in the background there as well so all sorts hanging around here uh, Prochega quite large railway yards in fact all the most of the stations have a, you know, most of the sizable stations have pretty decent yards because again rail freight uh, very very heavy reliance on rail freight for the for the region um quite an interesting mixture of all sorts parked up here so for the for the train nerds you, you get all sorts to have a look at fun times oh we're about to pull to a halt uh very dramatically pulled to a gentle halt with this rail yard very nice anyway as i was saying we are in pojega we've got this nice fairly flat section where we weave along the river uh, before we reach ujitsa at, at which point this this bit of the video will end um but yeah, there's, there's, I've, I've, I did a bit more filming, so there's plenty, plenty, plenty more content of, of this very, admittedly very slow, gentle rail natter. This is this is like background. Just put this on in the background. Enjoy, enjoy, enjoy joining, join me on a little train journey. Um, it's it's not the high energy, high octane content you, you you'd normally expect. Anyway, I'm waffling. And as we crawl our way out of Pojega, um, there's this little view of the station there. Uh, Cyrillic and Latin characters. I've not mentioned this. Uh, Serbo Croat, certainly in Serbia, um, the language is represented both by uh, Cyrillic characters and Latin characters generally. Um, anyway, there we are, this is SNC, just, you know, for those who fancy seeing some SNC. Uh, this, this little clip showing that uh, the train has still got a bit of speed. You know, we've seen the upgraded tracks, and we're going at 100 kilometers an hour or so, and uh, at this point, you know, the speeds have picked up, but it was still, uh, yeah still quite a slow journey there's plenty to you know this is becoming familiar now this this terrain should be should now be a bit more familiar to you still faster than the car yeah suckers yes <laughs> uh, much as the car is the main thing that everyone relies on to travel around Serbia it's nice to sit on a train and beat them all Generally, this whole area is, is kind of quite built up, so as you, as you kind of follow along the, the jet in your river, there's, there's sort of a sequence of, of increasingly large towns as you get into Ujita city itself. You can also see this kind of a, this ex-industrial vibe because there's, there's quite a lot of disused sidings along this stretch, and there are a few spots along. Um, uh, in, in a lot of cases, is because of um, sanctions uh, from the from the civil war, from the from the, the breakup of Yugoslavia, the, the the sanctions placed, which generally I have to say, as with many sanctions, uh, hit the the lowest off in you know the worst off in society, and generally don't make a scratch on the on the people they're supposed to be targeting. But there we go. Some, some larger industry at play here a uh, much bigger factory Impol yeah. don't know what they do big old factory probably create caustic soda or something and export it internationally I have no idea here we are as you'd say you can see that this is it's a population of about what it's about 60,000 ish um, very because it used to be a Tito town 
used to be uh, theatre voyage it's uh, you've got a lot of uh, additional investment you can see quite a nice looking uh, bus station down there you can also see all the tower blocks you know pretty high population density uh, pretty economically active city despite being kind of nestled in and out of the way um, in, a, in a far off corner of um, of, uh, of, uh, of Serbia but there's actually quite a lot of interesting stuff to do around Ujid so there's, there's, there's some, quite a lot of interesting tourist stuff there's a lot of heritage a lot of uh, nice historic stuff the station looks like it could do with some TLC frankly um, but uh, yeah, Užica there, you see the sign. Um, and uh, you can see with, with its top cut off, you can see Hotel Zlatibor in the, in, in, the dist- in the background there, which is a fantastic, and you can't see it now because I've got this nice static shot of the, of the station. But anyway, uh, the hotel, quite a fun, brutalist building if you, if you like that sort of thing, which I decidedly do. So, where are we? Well, as you can see, we've, uh, we've gone from Pozhega to Užica, the end of, uh, of, of this episode's trip, uh, or, or we'll, we'll go a little bit further, I'll show you uh, uh, pulling out of Užica, but for the most part, uh, this, this feels like a good ending point. Uh, we've been at it for pretty much exactly three hours, Yeah, we, we left pretty much dead on 8am and uh, we arrived in Užica uh, pretty much dead on 11am. You see Užica is right at the bottom of the hill to climb up uh, to go... Uh, directly underneath the Latibor Mountain, in fact. Uh, they are, you can see the profile, very nice. Um, and then it's uh, another dr- rapid descent down to Briboy, um, Priapolia, and the Serbian border, uh, which awaits us in our next episode. Did I say Priboy? I meant Priboy. Anyway, um, there's, a, there's a shot of the hotel's Latibor looking less good in camera than, than it did in, in, in person, I have to say. Anyway, Užica, big built-up area, um, uh, as we were seeing here. This station, by the way, existed before the Belgrade Bar Railway came through. It actually uh, was, was built in the, in the I think, the, the 20s. Uh, we'll, we'll talk more about railways in Serbia later. Anyway, this this shot, and, and I think, as we experienced a ton, and this, the, the next one, are of the same very interesting-looking castle-slash-house um, Possibly that's actually the old, the the, the, the old town above Užica. Um, that's that's a that's a well worth a visit if ever you went to the city. What's interesting now is we're climbing again. So the, the, you saw those interesting shots of, of of the buildings and the gorge and, and and that bridge over the river, as you fairly rapidly find yourself. Um, you know the the the, the built up area of Užica, even though it's quite tightly compacted. You know, sixty thousand doesn't sound like much in the UK, but it's quite as you saw a pretty dense little um, compacted area in the valley. It very quickly feels like a distant memory as you start weaving into this valley for the final climb. Actually, it's not the final climb in Serbia, but it's, it's the la- the last of the of the of the um, summits that's within Serbia, or at least close, because actually you're disappear out into here's, here's a good view of the mountains looking misty as ever actually at this point we disappear out into bosnia for a bit more on that in the uh in the in the next episode but uh, it's just a nice a nice look at these misty mountains very quickly it's like oh wow this is this is getting very scenic and as i say we're we're still not on the the ostensibly scenic part this is you know the, the bit that everyone remembers this that's just glorious anyway oh look it's me looking pensive uh, I don't think I'm going to say anything. I'm just looking pensively out at the view, filming myself, looking around. Oh dear. Anyway, it's pre mustache me, isn't it? It's two years ago. Anyway, I digress. I'm just, oh, I'm showing you there a misty mountain. As if, as if I've not shown you enough misty mountains. Oh, I could say it was senior. Oh, we've disappeared into a tunnel again. The, yeah, that's just, it's worth reiterating. This is a stunning bit of railway. Like the whole route is stunning, but this section is, you know, just the Serbian section alone is absolutely stunning on any, by any, uh, by any measure. Oh, look, another tunnel and uh, a a gorge with a river in it, uh, the Jetinja. Actually, it might not be the Jetinja at this point, but um, it, it was coming out of Užica. Um, this is a spectacular bit of civil engineering. I'll talk later about some, the number of tunnels and bridges along here. But, you know, as as we go past, it's not just tunnels and bridges, but all the retaining structures, like some of these concrete retaining structures you can see here, um, you know, with with spray creep behind it. Just, just an enormous civil engineering undertaking to get this rail into existence, and it's only going to get more spectacular. Anyway, in the meantime, it only remains for me, before this episode closes out, to say thank you and apologies to the audio-only listeners. I have no idea how this works in audio-only. I always say that, but this one's particularly bad. There's lots of, like, quiet moments. Just you wait until you get to the end part where I'll give you the bonus footage. Patreon.com slash Gareth Dennis for, um, to support more of this happening. I mean, this is a bit of a weird episode. It's slow telly, what can I say? Um, Gareth Dennis, 
gathdennis.co.uk slash merch for the, the Teespring merch. Uh, paypal.me slash gathdennis for uh, loose change and low commitment. And gathdennis.co.uk slash discord for the YouTube chat to continue happening and infinitum. Hello, everyone in the YouTube chat. I, I don't know how this has been for you. Normally, these uh, pre-records get lower numbers. But, yeah, you know, it's like you're joining me on a rail. I think I said this earlier, didn't I? It's like you're joining me on a railway journey. And it's been a pleasure to have you along. Next week's episode, um, uh, episode 180, uh, Ban Private Jets Make the World Better with Hannah Lawrence from Stay Grounded. Yeah, Hannah and I join each other for a chat that we've um, already pre-recorded um, about uh, all things aviation, uh, but specifically campaigning about aviation, some of the problems with aviation, particularly with um, bullshit flights. Uh, we talk a bit about legitimate flights. Yeah, it's, 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 uh, it's an interesting little chat. Uh, that's next week. Dean has just gone to the um, vestibule because she's a closeted rail nerd, uh, although she'll never admit it. Um, well, that's what I keep telling myself. We've um, just gone through the, like, this canyon with the uh, the river Jet in you. Um, absolutely spectacular. South of Ojitsa and uh, the Hotel Zlatovo, which I've put some video of it a minute ago. Um, that canyon, that's still on the other side of the train, actually. Absolutely spectacular. Nice little passing loop here. It's pretty amazing so far. We've not even really climbed up into the mountains yet. Is it worth the 20 euros we paid? So far, very much, and it's only gonna get better. Even the bad weather. And indeed, as I give you a last glimpse out the window at the uh, at the fields, the trees, uh, uh, the, the passing loop, and also as we disappear into a tunnel, just a reminder everyone, um, yeah, if, if you're so interested, uh, there's, there's quite a few extra minutes of, of footage poking out the back of a train uh, without me talking over it for you to enjoy, if, if that's the sort of thing that tickles your fancy. In the meantime, see you next week. Cheerio!